fire zone. children like this young man were with their family and they saw this happen in broad daylight and the trauma Sunday happened afternoon. in the middle of the afternoon on Sunday afternoon. So they could see it. It was that visible that anybody could see it. So that means that So it wasn't as if it was an unknown quantity. It wasn't an unknown quantity to the community. 
so many people knew him, had passed by him, had given money to him. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was he was a fixture in the community. So the trauma is not just that a homeless person was it's human, but it was somebody that was so human because so many people knew him. Was this one in black office or something? No. No, sir. Oh, 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 oh. Now, when we say homeless, so that's misleading because they always do this character assassination. He was in jail for vagrancy. He was not in jail for a felony. What he did across the street was even a misdemeanor at best. It was all under $100. So it wasn't a felony. He was at home with his mom in New Mexico. He had family here. So he had a home. He was homeless by choice. He wasn't homeless because his family was getting a rap that, no, that's not the case. He was homeless because he wanted to be on the street. He couldn't adjust. He didn't know anybody right. And he had his relationships. Uh, Pastor Coleman, I believe Pastor Davis, we were together, and there was a white gentleman who lived on the street with him. Yep. Said he was just getting tired. He was tired of everything that was going on. Gentleman told us yesterday. Just and then see what you have. You you identified in the earlier statement that this whole service to people with disability is something that really needs to be paid attention to. People in the streets are not there simply because they want to be there. When about 2015, with well, 20 years ago, when Governor Engler became governor and he eliminated health care mental health care, closed down mental health care agency. The homeless population in this state skyrocketed. I was working down in Wayne County and the first thing we had to respond to was how to deal with people who had no place else to go. And there's no treatment. And if you if you add to that people with post traumatic stress disorder and other issues, veterans. there's no treatment. You the veterans. Veterans. PTSD. People, veterans Suicide numbers are greater than the combat yes. numbers in yes. Iraq. Yes. Suicide numbers. Yes. Because of trauma. Because right. of trauma. Post traumatic. Right. right. To add that, add to that, the actual environment that you described earlier today, people economically impoverished, and then the hopelessness that, that's created by it. This is one of those situations that you got a tipping point. That's why we're here. Well, when, when they often say that uh, guns don't kill people, people kill people. In this case, people pull the trigger on the gun, and which means there was a mental predisposition towards killing him as opposed to having patience with him. And there are a couple of cases, right? But there were whites who were in the bomb for range. That's right. Were given with a, within a, few, within a couple of weeks. Within two days of this shoot. Walmart in Bay City where a young white man Beth. left in the possession of uh oh, oh, yes, of course. He came out of cover. He was told a couple a couple of white cases. What's that? Within a matter of days, a couple of cases of whites were involved in Bay City case. In my in Bay Walmart. City shooting. Well there wasn't a shooting that it was the individual was paid that was stealing from Walmart. I'm not familiar with that one. That was two days after the case in Alpena. Was that the one on the assault weapons claim? Right, and he was shot by the police. No, he wasn't shot by the police. Okay, I'm thinking of a different case. Yeah. Okay, right, right. Yeah. He was detained. That's an AR-15 and or assault weapon. And when the police rolled up on him, I ain't nobody but Brad. He was in Baghdad. Talked him down and left him. That was an assault weapon claim. Now the question is, if they're trained at the same academy, and if the training's not different from Saginaw, it is from Bay City, I'll I submit to you, what is the difference in how the system plays? Let's, let's hear it, let's pray. Okay. That was Reverend Wal Martin, there's a gentleman in Bay City. Okay, a lot of similarities there, but different outcomes. The Walmart situation in Bay City was several days after this where he had a pocket knife in his possession. He was stealing either a Frisbee or batteries. He fled the store, was pursued by the police, wow. one policeman, one policeman, tased him and detained him. 
After further investigation, he broke away again, chased him, tased him, put him down. Didn't kill him. And the article read, unlike Saginaw, we don't kill people. In Bay City. In Bay City. Mm -hmm. Bay City is 12 miles approximately north. Mixed about community. About. About Bay.